right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Less wind overnight, dry for the weekend, summer-like temperatures, but by the start of next week, I'll time out storm chances. Caught in the crossfire, a man in his 80s is recovering tonight after he was hit by a stray bullet just hours before his birthday. But first, classroom controversy. A Parkway Central substitute teacher escorted off school grounds. I got my car and left. The decision that cost him his job. Within the past hour, the school's principal addressed parents and students in an email. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. It stemmed from how the substitute teacher responded when he saw a Black Lives Matter and Gay Pride sign when he showed up to class. Five in your side's Brent Solomon talked to the sub, who is defending his actions. When Jason Jennings reported to Parkway Central High last week, he arrived to his classroom and saw two paper signs, one of them representing Black Lives Matter, the other a rainbow. I decided to take those down and tear them up. He posted these images on Twitter, saying, quote, this is what needs to happen when teachers insist on grooming kids. He refers to Black Lives Matter as a hate group. Adults are, you know, can, can do what they want in their own lives, have their own convictions, their own beliefs. But when it comes into being in the classroom, they just should not be, it's, it's not something that should be in front of kids. Someone who appears to be the teacher he was filling in for fired back, saying, quote, those were my signs. How dare you? You will not sub in my room again. What you're doing is creating a safe space for that student to know, just be yourself in this classroom. Jordan Braxton with Pride St. Louis believes both signs served an appropriate purpose. Black Lives Matter is an organization and a movement that um, fight social injustice and inequalities about the black community. And what the pride flag stands for is that we are a community that is accepting and inclusive. The company that hires substitutes for Parkway Central said it is, quote, deeply troubled by the reports of inappropriate behavior involving our employee. Our top priority is to protect the safety and well-being of the students we serve. And we do not tolerate employee behavior that violates our policies or the policies policies of our school partners. Jennings tells me the school principal approached him Friday. Very respectfully and, and just looked at me and said, hey, I need, I need you to grab your stuff and come with me. And I was like, I, I, honestly, I was kind of shocked. I didn't know what it was about. I got in my car and left. By the way, Jennings is running for state office. A school official says he was soliciting votes from students at school. He denies it. Parkway says he was relieved from his duties due to, quote, unprofessional behavior. Tonight, a Parkway school district parent is facing charges after police say his son brought a loaded Glock to Hannah Woods Elementary in Manchester. The child told his teacher that he had the gun in his backpack but didn't mean to bring it to school. Investigators say the student's father admitted to putting the gun in the bag last night and leaving it there by mistake. Police took Tony Fisher into custody. He's being held on a child endangerment charge. Hannah Woods principal Melissa Shwe released a statement saying in part, anytime a weapon is brought to school, even without intent to cause harm, it is considered a violation of Parkway's discipline policy. She says they will continue to cooperate with police, with police during the investigation. Here's a live look from the Kirkwood Farmers Market. It is shaping up to be a great weekend for gardening. Meteorologist Jim Casillo is here with our weather first forecast. Tell us about this yeah. springtime weekend that we have coming up, Jim. We do. You know, it's going to be a taste of summer. How about that? Uh, but how long will these 80s last? So today it was 69. And then as we get into uh, tomorrow and also Sunday, so the 10 days coming up, and there's big changes in it, but Saturday and Sunday, 83 for Saturday, 85 Sunday. Some areas may be a little bit warmer than that, and you'll notice that warm breeze Saturday and Sunday, plenty of sunshine, absolutely dry throughout the weekend. If you're headed to the St. Louis City SC match on Sunday, 3, 4, 5 p.m., so 84 degrees. West wind at 10. It's going to be fantastic. So current wind speeds, we had really high gusts throughout the past, I'd say 36 hours, but you can see below most areas, below 10 miles an hour now, and some areas calm. It is 58 degrees, a west wind at about 6 at Lambert, and the weather headlines clear tonight. The wind continues to die down. It's very warm this weekend and dry 
until next week. But those storm chances do ramp up. I'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Tonight, an 82 year old St. Louis business owner is recovering after being hit by a stray bullet. It happened last night near North Vandevender and Cottage Avenue in North St. Louis. New tonight, a friend of the victim who almost got caught in the crossfire tells Robert Townsend he was shot just hours before his birthday. For more than 30 years, Buck Ford has run this towing and auto repair shop near North Van Aventer and College. His business is named after him. Practically everyone in this north side neighborhood knows Mr. Buck. I did real good work for him. I, I recommend him to anybody. Laid back, just come to work. He, he, he worked with people all the time when they don't have all the money. Ordinarily, Mr. Buck would have been at his favorite spot today, but his wooden fences were locked and his shop dark because a stray bullet hit the beloved business owner. We heard the first couple of shots and then we heard like rapid shots, 15, 20 shots. This guy told police just before 8 Thursday night, two people, likely teenagers, repeatedly shot at each other in the 3800 block of Cottage and then ran off. I saw how fast that youngster was running. And he was running like a jackrabbit. He says bullets flew as he sat in his car and waited for Mr. Buck to close for the night. I was ducking in my car. I ducked, I just did this here. Suddenly, his bleeding longtime friend staggered outside, leaned against his car, and told him he'd been shot. His buddy quickly called 911. He was inside the shop washing his hands. The bullet ricocheted off the car rack and hit him in the chest. What's more, the popular business owner was shot the night before his 82nd birthday. So at this point, police really don't have a lot of information about the shooting. One thing is certain, though, those who know Mr. Buck are just so glad he's still around to celebrate another birthday. He's real lucky, you know, that he, it didn't hit his heart because it was right up above his heart. Get well soon because I'm gonna, probably going to need you real soon to do some more work for me. <laughs> Robert Townsend. And, and I'm, saying, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you. Five on your side. Tonight, the St. Louis Family Court and Metro Police are investigating after several teens held the, at the juvenile detention center were hospitalized. It happened last weekend at the facility on Enright Avenue. Police say the teens appeared to be, quote, under the influence of substances. They didn't say what the substance was or how the teens got them or how many went to the hospital. They were returned to the center. St. Louis police want to return more than 100 stolen items from a suspected burglary ring. Police say they were taken from garages and storage units over a period of several months. Officers found the stolen property inside a home on Hermitage Avenue last Tuesday following a long investigation. They arrested three people. Right now, only Gage Lutman is charged. He has an extensive history of burglary. Uh, we, my partner and I have arrested him twice last year for burglary. He was uh, solo actor who he would just find a, a garage if it was open or un, unopened he'd force entry steal items and take off in a stolen vehicle it was floor to ceiling uh, basement sheds inside just full of property that we were able to get out and hopefully return to the rightful owners if you think any of these stolen items belong to you police want you to email them you can find that information and pictures of the recovered items on ksdk.com just look for this story under the as seen on tv tab the superintendent for the fastest growing school district in the state is leaving the job after two years. Dr. Danielle Tormala announced she is taking a sabbatical before retiring at the end of the school year. She didn't give a reason for the sudden departure, but the district has seen several political controversies in recent years that may have added pressure to the position. All of these sort of culture war issues culminating in the school districts. We see um, not only do parents care about these things, but those concerns and fears are being stoked by politicians. And then they bring their political issues into school districts. That can really exacerbate the issues for the superintendents and the teachers. The Board of Education said the search for an interim superintendent will begin immediately. In the meantime, their deputy superintendents will assume the roles of co interim superintendents. The results are in for the special mayoral election in Bridgeton. City Council members Randy Hine and Don Hood were on the ballot today to replace former Mayor Terry Briggs, who died in February. With about 54 percent of the vote, Hine was selected to finish Briggs's term. He served as interim mayor after 
Briggs' death. A local family's life forever changed by a deadly car crash. Two young children killed, their two brothers and father seriously hurt. He's still here and we're gonna fight for Lincoln and we're gonna live on for Lincoln. The area football team that's helped turn the tragedy into a source of comfort for the young survivor. It's an important day for many Americans, tax day. You have just a few days left to file. We verify the penalties for late filing. Light wind overnight. The temperature will feel more like summer this weekend. I'll have the newly updated numbers and the 10-day forecast. It just doesn't feel the same. For the first time, a Washington County family is talking about the deadly crash that changed their lives. Two young children died in the October crash. Their brothers and father survived. In a story you'll only see on Five in Your Side, Annie Crawl explains how a football team is lifting the family up. Because we are a family and we are a team and we don't know no other way. A team huddled can be a powerful place for a second grader. I'm just glad I'm with, at home and with my family. A family hit by tragedy. You just have such a big dream for your kids. You never expect something so tragic to happen. Lauren Fleming and her son Ellis Weidman losing his brother Lincoln and his stepsister Amelia in a deadly crash last October. We hit a brick that was on the road. The car was like squished almost. My dad's head was bleeding. Something happened. They hit a time warp. The universe changed, it flipped. I don't know. Yeah, God had different plans. Ellis survived, but has been in a wheelchair ever since. You get up like any other day, you go to work, they're going to school, we're gonna see them after dinner, like it's gonna be fine. Both Lauren and Ellis found comfort cheering on the nearby semi-pro football team, the Missouri Falcons. Though he might not be putting on pads next to you all on the football field, what does it mean to have him here? You're escaping what you've known for the past couple of months. If, if we can bring a smile to his face and let him escape what he's been going through, I'm all for it. The perseverance and dedication that Ellis showed after his accident, you could see walking here on the football field of Orchard Park with the Missouri Falcons. They now call him their little brother. The players ask weekly, how's he doing? How's he doing? How's he doing? Me and his mom talk every week. You have all the bros you can lead up against. You're not in this fight alone. And getting strength from her faith, Lauren says, knowing Lincoln lives on as an organ donor to five other people. Lincoln's still with us no matter what. Tackling life one day at a time. Ellis has just been our heart and soul. Um, he followed us all the way to Iowa, followed us all the way home, and the first person we saw when we got back to work was uh, our, our younger brother. Reporting in St. Clair, Annie Crawl. Five on your side. And today is National Donate Life Blue and Green Day. People are encouraged to wear blue and green and promote the importance of registering as an organ donor. If you would like to register, look for this story under the As Seen on TV section of KSDK.com. Developing tonight in Texas, the FBI is investigating after a semi-truck driver intentionally crashed into a Department of Public Safety building, killing one and injuring a dozen more. It happened about 70 miles northwest of Houston. Authorities say 42-year-old Clonard Parker stole a semi in a police chase before slamming into the building. The mayor of that town says it could have been much worse when the suspect tried to ram the building a second time. Our fire chief mentioned that if he had veered a little bit to the left the second time, there would have been a collapse of that building, which would have resulted in a lot more injuries and possible death. While the motive is not known, police say the suspect tried to renew his commercial driver's license yesterday, but was denied. He is facing multiple felony charges. The tax filing deadline is this coming Monday, but what if you miss it or just don't file? Casey Decker with our National Verify team explains what happens when you're party on your taxes. The deadline to file your taxes is April 15th, and some of our viewers wondered what would happen if they didn't file their taxes or filed them late. So let's verify. Is there a penalty for not filing your taxes on time? Our sources are the IRS, H&R Block, and TurboTax. The answer depends on whether you owe the IRS money. If you owe any taxes and fail to pay that money on time, the IRS will begin to charge you penalties. 
every month those penalties continue to rack up and you're also charged interest on top. Then, if you not only fail to pay on time, but also fail to file your return on time, they charge an additional penalty, which also grows over time and also accumulates interest. And if you owe state taxes, your state might charge you similar penalties as well. So yes, there are penalties for not filing your taxes on time. But what if you don't owe money to the IRS? What if you're due a refund? In that case, there is no penalty for not filing, at least not from the IRS. But if you don't file, you can't get that refund. So it's sort of a self-imposed penalty. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Have something you would like us to verify? Just send an email, the address, verify at ksdk.com. Jim is back with another look at our weather first forecast. And if you like the 80s, welcome to the weekend, right, Jim? Uh, yeah, you know, we're going to be in the 80s for a while. Uh, there is an end to them, and I'll show you that coming up. But we started the week off with a total solar eclipse. Unbelievable. And then during the week, we had about an inch and a quarter of rain in St. Louis, a little bit more in some spots. But look at the precip. 12 days of April so far, we've had 4.33 inches of rain. We're way above average, 2.62. And for the year so far, about an inch above average. So we could use a break from the rain, and we're going to get that all weekend and, and likely through most of Monday. Then after that, chance of storms. More on that in just a second. Uh, so current wind speeds, they're going down. That's good. It's been very gusty out there. A beautiful shot. City SC takes the pitch on uh, Sunday at 345 p.m. It's going to be a warm day in the 80s. Right now we're at 58. West wind at about six miles an hour. Humidity is low, so it's going to be that dry air for the next couple of days here. Lows tonight in the 40s. In fact, some upper 30s, low 40s in the coldest spots, 47 in St. Louis. And the satellite radar shot a couple of showers in Indiana. But other than that, we just have the uh, ground that has been soaked from the earlier rain this week. And tomorrow it's sunny and south wind at about 10 to 20, some gusts to about uh, 20 miles an hour, uh, probably 2022. 20, and then as we get into uh, the daytime, low 80s for highs. Here's this warm front, still very dry for Saturday, also Sunday, about 85. Wouldn't be surprised to see a few numbers, a little higher than that. And then our concern is for probably Tuesday more so than Monday night, but maybe a shower or a storm with this warm front Monday night. As we get into Tuesday, this is a strong cold front and the ingredients seem to be coming together for that risk of severe weather. So we will watch this on Tuesday. All of us have a chance of, of any type of severe weather. And so we'll just uh, update you this on the weekend and uh, we'll have more information on it, especially by Sunday night about Tuesday and, and the plan on, on what we're expecting. Other than that, the 10 day forecast real quickly showing temperatures in the 80s. And like I said, it doesn't last. In fact, close to 90 on Monday and we're dry through Monday and then a chance of a shower or storm probably late Monday, definitely Tuesday. Wednesday looks dry 81 and then Thursday 72. But look at Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're back in the 60s, but it, it doesn't look like freezing temperatures, but lows in the 40s. All right, a lot going on in the next yeah. week. All right, thanks, Jim. Corey Miller's next with sports. Well, the Blues are on the brink of elimination, and the Cardinals are crushing in the desert. We'll have you covered for all of it. Coming up next in sports. This Five on Your Side Sports Report is sponsored by Tele Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. We've been saying it for what seems like weeks now. The Blues are clinging to their playoff lives. Well, we are about out of games on the schedule and coming into tonight, the Blues were still not eliminated. With three games left, they cannot afford to lose any of them. There's a the situation. Blues lose tonight. Vegas wins. It's over. It was a tough assignment for the Blues against Rod the Bod and the Carolina Hurricanes. Zach Dean thought he had his first career goal, but oh man, Frederick Anderson, insane save to keep things scoreless. Blues breakthrough. Guess who? Zach Bolduc. Third game in a row. One nothing Blues. Kane's tied it. Jordan Cairo untied it. His 30th goal of the season. Two to one Blues. We're tied at two in the third now. Jacob Slavin is going to break the tie. Kane's got some empty netters. They win five to two. Vegas is winning three to one right now in Minnesota. So tonight very well could be the end of the Blues playoff chances. You know, Sky's in here. No matter what the odds are or kind of where we're at in the season, we never gave up and um, we won't give up. So. Um, 
that's what I'm taking away from this. It's been an emotional month, month and a half here. It's uh, it's been fun hockey, uh, a lot of competing. I think we grew a lot as a team. Obviously, a, a tough re result here tonight. Maybe the desert air was all the Cardinals needed to get that offense going. Cards in Arizona facing the NL champ D-backs. And sound the alarm, the drought is over. Nolan Arenado finally gets his first home run of the season. Absolute bomb. 425 feet. Cards up 3-0 there. I think Nolan liked that one. Welcome back, Lars Newpar. His second half bat of the season goes even further than Arenado's homer. 438 foot two run blast that made it six nothing but oh my the D-backs have blasted their way back off Steven Matz and Giovanni Gallegos it is six to six right now in the sixth inning it is quite possibly my favorite couch weekend of the year there is nothing better than plopping down on the sofa and watching the Masters for hours on end okay maybe winning the Masters ticket lottery and actually going to Augusta would be just a bit better it was rough out there today though look at this wind the sand is blowing everywhere. The flags are almost coming off their flagpoles. Some crazy wind in Georgia. A few folks managed to have a good day in the conditions, though. Max Homa, Bryson DeChambeau, and Scotty Scheffler are tied for the lead at six under. Nice day for Tiger Woods as well. He shot even and is plus one for the tournament. He's in the hunt going into the weekend. It's the 24th straight time he's made the cut at Augusta, and playing alongside Tiger is always interesting. I don't actually find it too difficult. He's really easy to play with, and the crowd doesn't know you're there, which is pretty awesome. The way the, the ball is moving on the greens, uh, chip shots are being blown. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's all you want in a golf course today. It won't be long until we're talking about a new college football season. We'll be talking about this guy a lot. Mizzou quarterback Brady Cook was in town today for an NIL opportunity at Suntrip Ford. And the St. Louis native was not shy about his team's goals heading into the summer. It's a 12-team playoff this year, and the Tigers want to be part of it. I think this is, this is truly the first year um, in my career at Mizzou where everyone in the building believes we're going to make a playoff. Um, and, you know, that's special because every day you walk in there and there's a different sense of belief, you know, a different sense of hope. Um, and, yeah, I mean, the expectation is, you know, we're going to make a playoff appearance this year. Good news for SLU Hoops today. Gibson Jimerson is out of the transfer portal and on new coach Josh Schertz's roster. It'll be Jimerson's sixth season at SLU where he's racked up 312 three-pointers as a Billiken. It is officially miracle time for the Blues. They need any help they can get. It yes. doesn't look good. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah. All right, thanks, Corey. Empty weekend calendar. We can fill that for you. But look at what's happening in the loo this weekend. Are you looking for something to do this weekend? We've got you covered. You can kick off your day tomorrow morning with the Cardinals 5K at Bush Stadium. More than 2,000 runners are expected. It starts at 8.30. There's an after party at the Together Credit Union Plaza. Bar K, St. Louis's dog-friendly outdoor bar, will bring together puppy playtime and local craft beers from more than 20 breweries for their annual beer fest. Live music, doggy-centric vendors, and even adoption events will be there from 11 to 4. Tickets start at $35. Finally, on Sunday, the Chain of Rocks Park is having a grand opening party that starts at 2 on the Missouri side of the namesake bridge. There will be live music, food trucks, and even a guided tour of the bridge by the Missouri History Museum. Wow. We were talking about stuff we're going to do this weekend, and yeah. you were saying you probably will be wearing shorts. <laughs> yeah, it looks like shorts weather. Absolutely. So you're going to this uh, St. Louis City SC yeah. game, and uh, probably at game time, 85 degrees, 84. It's amazing. Uh, so this weekend in the 80s, it's sunny, perfect for every activity. And uh, the morning is cool enough for that uh, 5K also, which is nice. Uh, Monday, 87, and then 82 Tuesday. Good chance of showers and storms, some strong, possibly severe. And then as we get into uh, Wednesday, drier, 81. And Thursday, another chance of showers and storms. And then by next weekend, we're chilly again. Fireplaces are going, and we're in the 60s. Air this weekend. <laughs> heat next and week. Heat next St. week. Louis. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. St. Louis weather. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us at 10. The Tonight Show of Jimmy Fallon is next. Be sure to start your morning tomorrow with Dane St. Louis at 6 a.m.